Welcome. This English 2010 video is going to focus on the language you need to draft your research report. So we've discussed the process of conducting some research involves forming a question, reviewing and synthesizing your secondary sources, then collecting additional information from primary sources that help you better understand and respond to those questions. And then finally, you'll write what you've learned into a research report. And so this research report process involves making an outline, drafting, and then revising through feedback from an instructor or a tutor in order to get that final draft. So we want to focus now on the drafting stage. And as a reminder, these are the main sections that we'll include in our research report. These are the most common sections that appear in science and social science research. So we're learning not only how to maybe better read these types of sources, but also how to better write them. Now the abstract section is something that we will write at the end. It's a summary of our whole article. Don't worry about your abstract when you're doing your first draft. We'll talk about that later. What we do want to talk about is a reminder of what each section contains and also look at how the grammar of each section uh, functions and we'll look at some sample sentences taken from research reports. So the introduction section, section is essentially a synthesis of all the secondary research you did. So this can be multiple pages. In a sense it's almost like your argumentative paper as a section of a longer paper. And so the difference is that when you get to the end of your synthesis, you want to articulate or express a research question or research questions. These are things that uh, you still have answers about even after reading all of that research and synthesizing it. These are the things that you want to do primary research for in order to answer those questions. So in general, and this introduction and synthesis section uses present tense to explain the facts or ideas that you've learned about. This isn't new. This is what you did very well in your argumentative essays. Um, often writers will also use present tense to introduce their citations. Now, some writers prefer to use past tense. It doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you're consistent. And we'll look at some examples. Um, past tense is also used sometimes if you want to summarize the details of someone else's study. So you want to tell who they interviewed and where they interviewed it. Then you might use the past tense. So here's some example sentences. One here, experienced academics often announce their membership by using common knowledge markers. And so the, the verb there, announce, is in present tense. And so if we're describing what we've learned from research or what we think to be true, we'll probably use present tense to show that that is still true. Um, sometimes when we introduce a source like this one, Chandra Soma explains that, and we use present tense there. Now, other authors prefer to use past tense when they're describing work that or research that has already been published. That's another option as well. We see this other citation here that Pecorari pointed out that or Pecorari wrote that. Um, and so it's okay to use past tense or present tense when you introduce sources, but it's generally recommended that you choose one of them and be consistent. Now let's talk about the method section. Remember, the purpose of the method section is to explain how you did your primary research. You wanna explain that process. And so it's kind of a narrative, it's a story where you explain all the parts of it. Uh, so this is usually written in the past tense because you're describing something that you did. Um, and even though we often might avoid first person pronouns when we are describing the research of others and doing that synthesis, when we write about our own research, it's very important and relevant to use first person pronouns. So you might have a sentence like, I recruited participants from my school or from uh, a group of people who um, visit or shop in an area, or I used a survey to ask respondents about. And so we see those personal pronouns in all these three sentences, I recruited, I used, I compared, okay? And we also see that they're past tense verbs. Now you may, in that section, remember, you're probably gonna want to describe who you interviewed or surveyed, 
where you did it, how long it took, um, describe details about the people. And so you might see sentences like a total of 25 volunteers agreed to participate in the study. Two of the respondents were male, three were female. Interviews lasted about 10 minutes. So all of these are in past tense. And so that's what we often see in the methods section. Now in the results section, you want to answer the research question or questions that you included at the end of your introduction section. And you wanna answer those questions now using the data that you collected from your primary research. And so you might even list out question number one was this, and here's what I learned about question number one. And here's what I think is the best answer to question number one. So this section is often written in present tense. Um, but we often use what are called hedging terms. Hedging terms are phrases or words we use to soften the strength of what we're saying. This seems a little bit strange because usually we tell students and all writers, we should write strong, you should write bold, you should write very clear. But when we're writing about research related, especially research related to humans, we are never 100% sure of anything because there's so many factors. And so we often use verbs that soften. Instead of saying, this proves that, you might say, this suggests that, or this indicates that. And those are softer verbs that show that we think there's a connection, but we're not 100% sure. We could also use some modals. These are helper verbs to soften. So may, might, could. Okay? Those are all verbs we can add in front of a verb to soften the verb. Now, this might show that, or this could um, uh, uh, show a connection between some things. Here are some example sentences. All of the respondents said that, or one of the respondents reported that. Okay, these comments suggest that, the results indicate that, or their responses might show that. So we're describing and connecting what we learned from our primary research to answer the research questions, but we're never 100% sure that what we think is the connection is really there. We're just saying this appears to be a strong connection. Finally, in our discussion and conclusion section, we wanna do the so what. We wanna answer this question, why does this matter? How can we apply this to people's lives? Why would our audience connect, uh, care about this? And as we do that, we may make connections back to uh, any of the sources that we cited in our synthesis and try and show, hey, I'm seeing some similarities in my research with what I've learned uh, from the synthesis that I did, or I'm seeing some differences. Uh, the research suggested this, but when I interviewed people, I discovered something that looks different. Um, we also can use the discussion and conclusion section to make recommendations for future research. Maybe we had some problems with our research and so we make some recommendations. Oh, I could do this better. Or if researchers want to do a study similar to mine, I recommend they do this. Or we could say, hey, I've answered this question, but I still have these questions. So I recommend that researchers in the future look at these topics. Now in this section, we often use the present tense. Um, we also might use future conditional for talking about suggestions. So when we're summarizing our study, we could say this study suggests that, okay, and then we can make a connection between what we studied and the real world. How does this matter? Um, or my research implies that, okay, what should we change about the way we do things in the world? And now when you talk about uh, future research, you could say future studies should look at or could look at. One suggestion is that research could do this do something differently or do something new and you can explain that. So I hope this has helped you understand a little bit better how to use language to develop your draft and how to complete all the different functions that are within a research report. Our goal this week is to take your outline and draft as much of it as possible. You don't have to get the whole paper done, but the more you write this week, the more you'll have to show the tutor when you visit with them next week, and that will make it easier for you to revise and complete your final draft in the following weeks.